me a go no go for launch. Booster. Go. Retro. Go. Vital. We we'll go fly. Guidance. Guidance go. Surgeon. Go flight. Ecom. We're go flight. GNC. We're go. Tell me you. Go. Control. Go flight. Procedures. Go. Inco. Go. FAO. We are go. Network. Go. Recovery. Go. Capcom. We're go flight. Launch control, this is Houston. We are go for launch. Hi, this is Rick Anthony, and welcome to the Someone You Should Know podcast, the podcast that spotlights the stars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So sit back, relax, have a cold one, and get ready to meet someone you should know. Welcome to episode number one of the Someone You Should Know podcast. Let me give you a little bit of history here of the Someone You Should Know program. It actually aired on the All-Star Radio Network back in 1999, and when I was actually going through who I was going to have as guests on the show, this guy that you're going to hear next was one of the very first. He was not, I think he was the fifth interview that I did, and we have been friends ever since. We sent each other Christmas cards. We've known each other for a very long time. We've had dinner together. He's a real funny guy, a clean comic who you've heard on the Bob and Tom Show. His television appearances include ABC TV, Comedy Central, Showtime, WG in America, plus he has four comedy albums. Will you please welcome my dear friend Tim Cavanaugh? Hi, buddy. Hey, Rick. Great to hear hear your voice. Great to talk to you, as always. Rick and I, we, we do, we go way, way, way back to the, uh, to the all, All-Star Radio Network and uh and 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 all those things they said were true um you know we've had dinner together uh i remember when he was married to uh, jennifer lopez that's right yeah that uh, was that was a long time ago but that, you know that was that was good yeah and then there's always room for j-lo yeah, absolutely uh, <laughs> I mean, every <laughs> restaurant we went to, uh, I used that joke, and it oh, worked no. out perfectly. Oh, that's a real good. Now, Tim, if you didn't know, I mean, folks, if you don't know the story of Tim Cavanaugh, he before he was a comedian, he was actually a school teacher. He taught parochial school at an all-girls Catholic school in Chicago. That had that, to spur some comedy stuff. That that is, that is correct. I was a religion teacher at an all-girls Catholic high school uh, in Chicago, a place called Maria High School. Uh, which is now defunct, which had nothing to do with me or my tenure <laughs> there. I just want to make sure, sure everybody <laughs> knows that rumor All is right. not correct. Um, and, it, you know, it's it's interesting. I learned a lot teaching. I loved teaching. Uh, one of the hard things about teaching religion is the questions kids come up with. You know, one question I always used to get is, what's the difference between purgatory and hell? That's a good one. And the way I used to explain it is, well, hell, of course, is very, very hot. In purgatory, it's not so much the heat, it's the humidity <laughs> that gets to you. <laughs> I mean, the dry heat, anybody can stand that. But <laughs> So basically, the Midwest is purgatory, is what you're saying. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, that, that, that is exactly right. Keeping in the same, yeah. keeping in the same vein of, uh, of school, the next song we're going to play here is one called... Uh, I'm, I hate going back to school. Can you tell us a little bit about that before we play it? Yeah, this is a song that uh, that I wrote many years ago uh, and uh, has been played on the uh, uh, Bob and Tom radio show quite a bit. And uh, uh, it's it's a song that uh, I think has kind of universal truth to it um, in terms of uh, how people view school. So, um uh, that's it. Simple. All right, let's play it right now. This is I Hate Going Back to School from my guest, Tim Cavanaugh, on the Someone You Should Know podcast. I hate going back to school. I hate going back to school. I don't like books, the lunches sting, but nobody cares what I think. I hate going back to school. I hate going back to school. I hate it so much once last fall. I hid all day in the bathroom stall. I hate going back to school. Last year, our principal, Mrs. Rome, caught me eating boogers, sent me home, even though not all of them were my own. She wouldn't take that into consideration. I hate going back to school. I hate going back to school. Each year I give myself the speech. This is the last year that I'll teach. I hate going back to school. 
the funny man Tim Cavanaugh right there. I hate going back to school on the Someone You Should Know podcast with my guest today, Tim Cavanaugh. Tim and I actually share something that impacted both of our lives in 2021. Uh, I was diagnosed and treated with prostate cancer, and my buddy Tim had pancreatic cancer. First off, how you feeling, buddy? I feel good. I feel really, really good. I got uh, um, lucky and unlucky. Uh, unlucky to get pancreatic cancer, of course, uh, but very lucky that they found it early. And so um, that they got me stage two. Uh, and so, um, you know, after the chemo and the radiation, uh, they were able to do surgery on the tumor and uh, they removed it. And it seems to be gone. Uh, completely at this point. So um, cancer free. Yay. Yeah, you. Uh, that That's good. But, uh, you know, the in, some of the indignities you suffer uh, oh, yeah. when, when, when you're going through surgery and you're going uh, through a hospitalization. And uh, I know that uh, I had some complications afterwards and um, a radiologist came in and they, they were doing an ultrasound. Uh, on my abdomen and and he called all the all the nurses over and said you know am i wrong or am i seeing a uterus here <laughs> he was holding it I'm upside not down that up. <laughs> i'm not making that up and that's a reputable hospital oh my and, and he, he kept saying no i'm i'm a real radiologist and is is that a uterus and of course i asked you know please don't tell me i'm pregnant <laughs> Uh, because that's all I need. Oh, I know. Especially, point. especially at your age too, my friend. Yeah. It's just... at, at, at my <laughs> age, it's dangerous. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I already had enough incisions and, and, and things coming out of my body that I didn't. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. As far as, as far as the unusual things, the, the big thing with me was because, you know, I make a living off of talking. The, the only con- concern I actually had out of the entire thing was talking with the anesthesiologist as far as be careful with the vocal cords, please be careful with the vocal oh, cords. God, that's that's <laughs> true. Yeah, that that's true uh, because it was. Uh, I, I think Julie Andrews had that problem, mm-hmm. uh, and um, um, I think um, oh, uh, Joan Rivers, I believe, uh, had that problem too, where they they nicked her vocal cords right. and. Um, Ugh. Not a good thing. Yeah, it's it's, Not a, good it's thing. a nightmare. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Glad you're feeling better, buddy. And uh, keep us posted on how you're doing and such. Uh, I am one year oh, cancer absolutely. free. Uh, I am one year cancer free as of the 10th. Uh, so I'm excited about that, too. Just got to figure out how to get everything else working properly. Uh, coming yeah, up, yeah I, absolutely. Yeah. Keep, it's, me, keep me posted. It's odd I have you as my first guest because the guest I have coming up that I'm actually interviewing in just a day or so is a mutual friend of ours. And he's promoting the Cornerstones of Rock Tour, which is actually playing all over the Midwest. My my friend and your friend, Jim Peterick. Yeah, Jim's a great guy. And I was so excited to see that he was on your list of uh, of guests because uh, Jim is a great guy, great musician, um, and has, has co-written so many great songs um, aside from uh, Vehicle and Eye of the Tiger. Uh, just absolutely a, an amazing uh, curriculum vitae or however you pronounce that yeah. <laughs> um and uh and and not not to mention one of the nicest guys in the world right so, right so you decided to take one of his songs from ides of march and correct. give it a different twist and not only did you give it a twist he is singing on it how did this all come to be <laughs> this is this is you know this is just how fates sometimes uh work out um my uh my producer the guy who produces most of my uh albums is a guy named scott may who also happens to be a great musician and uh an excellent keyboard artist and he is the current keyboardist for the band the ides of march which is jim peter (laughs) band. and so uh uh so i got to meet jim uh and and i'd written this parody you know, it was, it was always kind of a dream because I, I knew that uh, my friend Scott knew Jim, that uh, oh, it would be so cool if I could write a parody song of a, a, of a um, you know, a classic rock hit and actually perform it with the, with the guy who sang it in the first place. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened with this. I, I, I did the song for Jim. He loved it. And uh 
he said, yeah, I'll, I'll sing it with you. And so it's uh, it's on my most recent CD, uh, which is called uh, Love, Fish and Sausages, uh, because a lot of the songs. Are why not? Because why fish. not, Tim? <laughs> and, and sausages. It's, it's, I, you know, it's, it's like uh, every album has has a theme and, mm-hmm. and that's what this one is. All right, very good. So uh, the, the song is called Vehicle Man. We're going to play it next on the Someone You Should Know podcast. Welcome to the neighborhood. I see you've got kids the same age as mine. We're gonna get along really good. Yeah, I'm that vehicle man. I take the kids where they wanna go. I'm that vehicle mama. And my dad, I'm sure you know. I go to soccer, T-ball, piano lessons, Sunday school. Great God in heaven, I need to come. Oh, you know I do. Well, I used to have a black sedan The girls really went for that Now I drive a dot caravan And wear a little chauffeur hat Yeah, I'm that vehicle man I'm that shuttle to the mall I'm that vehicle woman And they don't tip at all I go to swimming Boy Scouts Three different classes of ballet Thank God it's Friday for Kate's 12th birthday yeah, Chuck E. Cheese weeks today. Dad, Dad. Brianne, I'm in the middle of a guitar solo here. Can't this wait? I have a dermatology appointment in 20 minutes, and if we don't leave now, I'm going to be late. Then we have to stop at Molly's to pick up our grandma's bullhorn for the pep rally. Oh! Oh, and then you have to drop me off at school. Great. And then pick me up afterward. And your mother can't? No. Well, it used to be a time to talk to my kids and their pals. Now they just sit with their earbuds in and text one another, say, Yeah, I'm that vehicle man. And that 24 hour ATM, I'm that vehicle baby. I can't believe how much they spend. At Best Buy, Old Navy, Abercrombie, also fit. Straight God in heaven, I could have been rich. Yeah, 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 yeah. I go to football, gymnastics, the finals of the spelling bee. Then 7-Eleven to get a Slurpee. Slurpee. S-L-U-R-P-Y. E-Y. I go to Heather's and Rachel's, the concert at the amphitheater. Great God in heaven, help me, it's Justin Bieber. <laughs> That, of course, is Vehicle Man, a parody of Vehicle by Ides of March, featuring the guy that actually sang it, along with my guest today, Tim Cavanaugh. Great song right there, Tim. Being a comedian, you're on the road a lot, and oh, yeah. occasionally yeah. you get a chance to go on vacation, but when I was writing comedy for the All-Star Radio Network, I realized I was never really off because I was always observing and writing constantly. Is that a true yeah. statement? That is absolutely true, yeah. Uh and my my wife gets uh, a little upset with me because I'm not good at relaxing. I'm not letting. I'm not good at letting go of business. And uh, you know, in our our jobs, yours and mine, uh, amongst other things, aside from you know doing dishes and, and taking out the garbage and things like that, um, is to uh, try to keep up with what's going on in the world. Uh, looking at trends, looking at people. Uh, and so uh, what seems like an innocent uh, little vacation, I I got in trouble. Um, uh, we, we took a few days off, my wife and me, and uh, uh, we uh, we took a little a little three day vacation and we're out walking in, in, in this in this cute little town that we were staying in. And 
I, I came across a church that, that like, I don't know, I take pictures of a lot of churches and um, I stopped. And when I do anything, it, it takes a long time. So, um, so I stop and my Chris, my, my wife, Chris keeps walking. She you know, I, I'd stopped. And, you know, three minutes later, she looks back and it's like, what are you doing? You're taking a, a picture of a church. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of what I do. And, and, and I, and, and I like to do it. And besides, I do this show every couple of years where uh, slides of these churches really comes in handy. So oh, okay. she said, so you're working. I said, yeah. uh, no, no, yes, yes. Yes and I, no. I, yes and no. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm working, but it doesn't look like work, does it? And uh, <laughs> it, it, it didn't. So uh, anyway, yeah, no, it, it's hard to relax. Right, right. As a matter of fact, you got a song about it called Comedian on Vacation. We're going to feature that one next on the Someone You Should Know podcast. It's great to be a comedian on vacation Just relax and have a drink or two Like I went to this bar last night And then walked a ten-foot Polish guy A black guy and his Jewish friend and nothing funny happened. Hey, I'm on vacation. Played some golf. Had a lot of fun. Didn't even think to wear two pairs of pants in case I got a hole in one. Crossed a horse and a donkey. Normally I'd get a honky. But this week I got a mule. Cause I'm on vacation. I'm taking I'm off gonna rest my funny bone What did the chicken cross the road From August 3rd through the 10th You're on your own Change the light bulb by myself A blonde gave me computer help It's great to be Oh, it's great to be Knock, 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 knock I'm not gonna answer I'm off the clock It's great to be a comedian on vacation. That is Comedian on Vacation from my guest today, the very first episode of Someone You Should Know, and one of the very first Someone You Should Know shows I ever did was this guy right here, Tim Cavanaugh, my dear friend. Tim, one of the things that I, I always love to share is uh, is tales from the road as far as events getting to and from gigs, events that happened on stage. I had so many great stories from so many great performers through the years, and I think you might have told me one before. But let's go ahead and, and update it on this audience. Since the last time we talked, what is the most unusual thing getting to a gig? Something that happened on stage? Something that happened with your accommodations? What, what about it? Well, I mean, it, it, there's there's all kinds of stories uh, that that come to mind. Um, and, uh, a lot of them involve, um, more danger than you would expect, oh my. um, for, 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 uh, for a stand-up comedian. Uh, we all saw what happened to, uh, Chris Rock. Right. Um, and you know, so, so he gets, he gets punched by a major star. Okay. So that's, that, that sort of thing. Um, uh, if, if you're not a major star and you don't hang out with major stars, all that means is that you are the victim of violence of uh, unknown people. So um, uh, this story, fortunately, has a, has a happy ending. All right, good. Um, uh, this is a tale from the road. And this is many, many years ago. Um, I, uh, I got invited to a place called Mesa College in Grand Junction, Colorado. And uh, they wanted me to MC a student air band contest. Uh, <laughs> not now, you and I, you remember what air band? Of course, uh, were yeah. Uh, but but it's 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 uh, you know people pretending to play instruments, mm -hmm. pretending to sing, and they you know and they 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 blast a a track from a band, and and uh, it's all good, clean fun. Or so one would think. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I get to this college, and the theater is absolutely packed. And uh, as soon as I hit stage as the MC, 
um, it became very clear that they weren't there to see me or to see comedy. Uh, and people yelled out, who are you? You suck. Get off the <laughs> stage. But, you know, I'm a show business guy and I say the show must go on. And also the check must be cashed. Right. <laughs> so uh, it, it it went on like this. I, I introduced uh, the first band. There's five guys dressed up like Blue Oyster Cult. <laughs> and and they, uh, they, they played Don't Fear the Reaper. You know, they had a track that was, you know, on 11 and the crowd just loved it. And it, it continued on like that. And, and, the, and the crowd uh, never really came to like me. But on the other hand, um, uh, I kept bringing out the bands and, and they were satisfied with that. So we continued on ACDC, the Stones, Kiss, who there's a half dozen of them. Anyway, when all the bands were done. Um, they were lined up behind me on stage. And I got to announce the winner. But the rules committee told me right before this that the first thing I had to announce was the disqualification of KISS for using pyrotechnics, which oh. were, were strictly prohibited mm -hmm. in the rules of this contest. So I made the announcement, and suddenly I felt a blast of heat on the back of my head. One of the KISS members had shot fire out of his mouth <laughs> right at me. <laughs> Oh my God! Luckily, luckily, I didn't catch fire. Well, yeah, um, yeah. You know, unlike Michael Jackson, unlike Richard Pryor, I mean, it, that might have been a good career move mm -hmm. for me, but it, but I, I don't think wow. I would have enjoyed it. Uh, luckily, the rules committee had said nothing about biting the head off of a live bat, or there might have been a riot oh, <laughs> at this place. <laughs> um, so, so um, while while the comedy seems all fun and 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 laughs and good times uh boy there there have been a few times when uh you escape with your life right and and the good thing of the whole story the check cleared <laughs> the check did clear the check did clear um i've never heard from the college again oh, geez. um and uh unlike the high school i taught at um, it is not defunct. It, it is it is still going on. So awesome. uh, I don't know if they're still doing air band contests, <laughs> but I hopefully they've refined the rules a little bit and um, uh, have, have maybe kept it um, yeah. off campus is what I would have done. I, all the years that I love to play air guitar, I never could keep it in tune. That's the that's the biggest struggle I had. That's was, the hard thing. Yeah, yeah it that, is. <clears throat> and, and, now they have air tuners, which is fantastic. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's really great. Auto tune for your air guitar. How about that? That's exactly Ooh, right, Tim. That's that's a million dollar idea, buddy. Let's get with together after that and talk about that. <laughs> that's a great idea. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to share with you a, a tales from the road that in, doesn't involve you. It doesn't involve me, but it involves our wives. Okay. Okay. This doesn't sound good already. Uh, 2012. Uh, we were up to northwest Indiana to visit family and friends and actually to gather all the Christmas presents going north, and we were taking everything south with us. Okay. I had, just, I had just had hand surgery, and I was, uh, let's just say, flying on Vicodin. Okay, so I could not drive. Okay. okay. Right. So we're heading back, and our first rest stop was uh, just south of Joliet on I-55. And uh, so we hit the rest stop, and, you know, the guys just, you know, they're, they're fast, and ladies are a little slow. So uh, I, I wound up uh, finishing what I was doing, and I was just sitting out there, and I heard laughter coming out of the woman's room, which mm -hmm. is something you really don't necessarily hear at a rest nope. stop, especially from the ladies' room. A That's few minutes later, a few minutes later, my late wife Gaynell comes out with your wife Chris, <laughs> and. Oh, my God, what a weird coincidence. Right. You know, the thing is, I here I'm thinking I'm flying on drugs. I'm going, this can't be happening for real. And sure enough, it's your wife and my late oh wife. Oh, my God. Uh, what, what, Chris, what, was, what, Chris was heading down to see you in Bloomington, and we were heading back to St. Louis. Uh, but that is a true story. We Our wives ran into each other in the restroom. And then I think the next time uh, I, I was talking with Chris or something like that, I says, you know, we were heading back to, you know, heading back from Northwest Indiana. So I I said, it doesn't seem the same not, not running into you at a rest stop. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, you got you to do it. Yeah, I, I don't think that uh, my wife, Chris, and, and Gaynell uh, met at a restroom again. No, no. Uh, ever. <laughs> uh, at least, at least, 
They've never confided <laughs> that in me, uh, which is good. And I just want to know what they were laughing so well, much Well, the thing about. is, I think it was just the, the coincidence of running into each other. And I think that was just kind of like, Chris, what are you doing here? Gaynell, what are you doing here? So it's like, well, I don't know. well I'll, going I'll to the bathroom, toilet, obviously. I'll, but <laughs> I'll, I'll bet toilet paper was involved somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, at some point, let's just hope there. Uh, now, you and Chris have been married a very, very long time, right? Yeah, we have. We've been married for 43 years. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, which is which is great. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, your Gaynell passed away mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, we loved her uh, with with all of our hearts. And she was just a, a sweet and wonderful woman. Um, uh, and, and you were lucky enough to fall in love again. Which, right. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We're so, so happy. So we've got to get together and, and have, uh, have 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 some chow together. All, all four of us again. Absolutely. And she hasn't heard any of my jokes yet. Uh, actually, so, I, I have uh, been I have been playing some, so I just wanted to warn you ahead of time. All right, so oh, just to prepare her for the all right, just prepare right, her for well. the podcast. So, <laughs> okay, all right, okay, that's well, good. The reason why I brought up Chris was the fact that uh, the next song we're going to feature is called "Half a Man," which actually has to do with the big D word, divorce. All right, yes, it does. Yes, it does. And, and so, and so, this is really uh, this song is is uh, fictional. And um, if I can mention the Bob and Tom show again, which, which mm-hmm. I hope I can, mm-hmm. um, the uh, uh, this song is recorded with me and uh, Becky Cavoyan, um, who at the time that we recorded this was Becky Martin. Uh, she is the wife of Bob Cavoyan, mm-hmm. um, who is the Bob of Bob and Tom. And um a great singer. She sang with the Bob and Tom band and that's how we met. And, uh, so, so she is the, uh, um, she's the woman in, in this, uh, track Mm -hmm. and then, uh, playing the part of, uh, the divorce lawyer is a guy named Dean Metcalf Uh, who is hilarious. And, uh, the producer of Bob and Tom and the leader Uh, of the electric Amish, isn't he? (laughs) And leader of the electric Amish. (laughs) Yeah, exactly right. Um, so, so, um, I, I enlisted two very, very talented people to help me with this thing. And um, I, I think it came out it came out pretty fun. All right, let's listen to it. Half a Man from his latest album, Love, Fish, and Sausages. <laughs> it's Tim Cavanaugh. There was a time when I sang my songs alone. change has come along I never had much except my words and melodies and now it's time to share this song with me I lost half the song in my divorce now every other line is mine I didn't want to Judge said there's no choice It's no big loss Cause this song stinks Just like your voice What do you know about music? You tone deaf little show. Excuse me sir, let me caution you That slanderous or defamatory comments Could result in the forfeiture of all of your rights to this song As well as the rights of your heirs And any other person or persons To whom you convey said rights in perpetuity That's my lawyer He got a piece of this song too Yes, I'm her lawyer. I got a piece of this song, too. That's a sad tale of half a man from the album Love, Fish, and Sausages from my guest today, Tim Cavanaugh. Tim, before we go, I want to talk about how people can book you for shows and find out more about uh, your gigs and also uh, buying your merch. Where can we go? Well, the the best thing to do is to check out my website, uh, which is www.timcav.com. That's T-I-M-C-A-V uh, dot com. I didn't spell out Kavanaugh because it gets misspelled all the time. Right. Yes. Uh, so, uh, but it's it's Kavanaugh with a C, so it's uh, T-I-M-C-A-V dot com. Uh, so people can find out my uh, my tour schedule and. Uh, can find out where they can get uh, 
uh, my uh, my CDs and um, a, a new DVD that will be coming out uh, hopefully in the next few months. Oh, wonderful! And so, uh, yeah, so uh, th- that's where everybody can keep up to date. Uh, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook, and um, I'm I'm easy to find. Right, you sure can. As a matter of fact, uh, I invite everybody to, if you, if he's playing in your local area, go see him. I have seen Tim numerous times, and it never gets stale. He's very, very funny, and uh, he's a friend of mine, and I think he's going to be a friend of yours now that you've heard him on the Someone You Should Know podcast. Tim, thanks for being on the show, man. I really appreciate it. Let's, let's do dinner. Thanks, Rick. Absolutely. Hi, this is Rick Anthony thanking you again for listening to this episode of Someone You Should Know. Now, if you're an aspiring musician or an established musician that's looking for a little exposure, I invite you to drop us a line at someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. That's someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. Also, I invite you to tell a friend about the Someone You Should Know podcast. I thank you for tuning in this time and I invite you to check us out next time on the Someone You Should Know podcast, because you never know who's going to show up. Until next time, remember, God loves you, and so do I.